All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. This is your brother Ron, and I'm back at you with another video by the grace of God. We are in this Proverbs series continuing um, with the uncovering of uh, multiple truths, multiple things that God would have us to enjoy and to consume of his good word. And so in this Holy Bible Journey series, uh, we have been looking at the reality of how each book uh, reflects Jesus, how each book uh, demonstrates the uh, reality of what Jesus uh, means to the world, what Jesus means to the universe, what Jesus means to uh, the uh, need for the salvation of mankind from their uh, corrupted condition, the, the condition that condemns them without a solution. But Jesus, he himself is the solution. He is the answer, the answer to the uh, problem that mankind has faced through this great opposition of sin and the devil. But God doesn't leave things that way. He has a glorious plan that he has been um, in the works performing for generations, for millennia. And so it's, it's such a, a blessing to uh, be awakened especially in these last days, to be awakened and to be involved in the very will of God, involved in the sacred plan of God to save lost souls from the uh, corruption of the enemy and into the very sanctification and purpose filled design that God has ordained for mankind, uh, for his sons and daughters, for the regenerated, for uh, the ones in which he says uh, uh, that he will cause to rule and reign with him a thousand years and beyond. And so he is truly the lover of our souls, the finisher of our faith. And so, um, so in Proverbs, um, we've been looking at the exchange, the, the contrast, the, the going back and forth uh, in reference to uh, the ways of the righteous uh, and the ways of the unrighteous, the ways of the godly and the ways of the ungodly, the ways of truth and the ways of um, falsehood. And so we want to, as God desires in us, to grow more in tune, in fine tune with the uh, destruction of old characteristics and the acceleration, the uh, arising of the righteous and the prudent and the um, healthy spiritual conduct that God wants to be a reality in his sons and in his daughters. And so the title of this specific message um, is stems from an encounter. And, and so one, one of the things that the word of God says is that uh, they who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Uh, God desires to lead his sons, to lead his daughters, to, to lead his children. Uh, and, and it's um, a reality of literally being moved by the Holy Ghost, being, being led, being moved, being prompted, uh, being given instruction, and then uh, going in the direction of fulfilling that specific instruction that is given supernaturally by God. So there is a prompting, a leading by God's spirit that God does uh, because he wants to um, ensure that there is a 
a expected end, a purpose-filled end. He, he wants to ensure that he has reason to bless, reason to uh, strengthen, reason. So there are uh, uh, things that we do that uh, are a reason to why responses are done uh, on our behalf. Uh, God can do things outside of our works, outside of our actions, but God does like to communicate to us at times through the fact that we obey his actual promptings, his word, and as a result, he does supernatural things around us to reveal that he is uh, pleased with the actions, with the specific things that we are do doing that are in line with what he has in in instructed. And so it's a beautiful thing. And so uh, God has given mankind, uh, not all mankind, but specific individuals, those who are born again, he's given specific individuals the spirit of God and and with the induction um, of the spirit of God in their body, there is now a basis, a higher basis, a, a connected, a covenant basis to how uh, God can uh, truly steward the lives of his people. And so he desires that. Now, the word of God talks about uh, being baptized in water uh, as a um, um, as a uh, covenant act, but it also talks about the being baptized in the fire baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, where the Spirit of God intertwines with man's spirit, and now there is a seeing things as God wants mankind to see it, see them. There is a ability to now uh, understand things, understand the word of God uh, be, uh, or, or measures of it, measures of it. And there are other aspects of hearing the voice of God, uh, all sorts of supernatural things that are now activated because of heaven being on the inside of man. And, and so this is a, a blessed reality of what God is doing in the shaping of his sons and daughters towards the manifestation of what they will be as he prepares them for the uh, ultimate end where all evil will be uh, vanquished and taken away and the remnant sons and daughters of God will be preserved and on the renewed earth as a testament of being saved from the wrath of God that the earth will come to see because of the perpetual darkness and ungodliness that has been happening for centuries, for millennia. Um, and, and so God, God's desire is to not allow evil to manifest or to happen forever. His desire is to take it away. And so evil does have a expiration date. It does have an end time. And, and so the people of God, we know that there's a hope that is in us. There is, is uh, treasures uh, in earthen vessels. There, there are specific things that we know by the Spirit according to faith in Christ Jesus that enable enable us to uh, grow more and more after the image of Jesus and to actually uh, uh, ultimately blossom into the individuals through uh, his uh, prompting and his leadership 
that enables us to ensure that the atmosphere has witnesses, witnesses of the reality of what God is doing. And so there are special things that God is doing, and he wants people to be a part of it. He doesn't want man to die in sin. He doesn't want man to uh, forever be um, sent to um, hell or the lake of fire. He wants for the ultimate regeneration, uh, the uh, remaking, the reshaping, the remolding, um, of mankind so that mankind can benefit from the very end uh, beautiful work that God is actually in the process of doing. Um, you know, God created man so special. It tells us that in the book of Jeremiah, um, you know, from the, the mother's womb, he created mankind for a purpose, for a special mission, um, as a voice to the nations, uh, you know, wanting to induct specific individuals into this, uh, this uh, ministry of reconciliation plan and for individuals in their individual generations throughout time to be a part of this mission of ultimately uh, uh, bringing many sons into the kingdom and ultimately uh, growing closer and getting closer to the very time where uh, God would uh, bring a culmination uh, a fullness uh, of times, uh, a dispensation um, of times uh, actually manifesting. And so, so it's, it's a beautiful thing as far as the, the plan of God, this wonderful plan to, to bring about the knowledge of God uh, in the earth. Uh, and and to showcase what God is doing and what He uh, also plans on uh, uh, manifesting in the end. And so, um, so the the title of this particular video is um, uh, the the student asked the teacher a question. <laughs> so the student asked the teacher a question. So. Um, so in the Proverbs, in, in the Proverbs, we know that there is constant talk of wisdom, constant talk of understanding, constant talk of knowledge. And so God wants mankind to have the levels of knowledge that God has foreordained for individuals to have. Because in that they are it, they are participating, they are in the know, they are in the, the knowledge, um, and even in the prophecy that is ever manifesting towards the end result that we've um, been mentioning. And so this is a very good thing. So wisdom is a good thing. Wis wisdom is the principal thing, as it says. Uh, wisdom... Um, uh, the fear of the Lord uh, is the beginning of wisdom. And, and so there's much that is said about wisdom, much that is said about wisdom. And so we are in position to gain more wisdom from the God who created it from the very foundations of what it is. We, we've talked about um, the lady wisdom. And we, we've talked about um, how she uh, is a support, you know, uh, that's why there's a female connotation to wisdom, uh, how wisdom is uh, not the primary, but uh, the primary um, authority, but it's a supporting agent that enables discretion and, and good judgment and, and righteousness to manifest. Uh, it's being able to see beyond the surface, being able to gauge and, and consider uh, with 
with sound knowledge. And so God wants to enable mankind to have that, specifically sons and daughters of God, people who have the spirit of God that that in that um, ultimately connects them to the very source of wisdom. And so God releases levels of wisdom as he desires in man so that man can know uh, what the plans of God are at their specific level. And so so the student asks the teacher a question. So I re so okay, so I live in the state of Georgia, right? Uh, so yesterday I was driving. I was driving and in the state of Georgia, when you drive, one of the things that you're going to see are trees, right? You're going to see trees. You can see a lot of trees, right? And so I'm driving. I see a lot of trees. Trees are coverings for neighborhoods. You, you know, you behind these gigantic 50-foot trees, 60-foot, maybe even 100-foot, I don't know, trees, you know, um, that are stacked up on these mountains, Behind these trees are are houses and 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 neighborhoods and you know communities and and um, developments and so these trees are are coverings for these um, areas for many of the areas it, throughout um, Georgia and, and so one of the things that uh, happened yesterday was I simply asked the question to God. I asked God a question, you know, and it came from, you know, seeing the trees. Um, hey, God, why so many trees? Why, why so many trees? Like, there's trees everywhere. Like, why so many trees? And so it's, and so as I asked that question, you know, I, I believe what happens next um, is that there's a journey that happens. I go on a journey. <laughs> and so this journey is um, starts off with Genesis um, chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Now my mind goes there. Genesis chapter one. And and so in Genesis chapter one, it talks about the creation of trees. Um, talks about the creation of the veg vegetation and all of the different things that happened on day three, um, and and so th this cultivation of the ground and the um, the the seeds then blossoming and 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 in rapid form, God allowing these seed these seeds to to grow and uh, and to manifest into large trees, uh, for large trees to erect um, right there before God's sight as he's in the process of generating creation. Um, you, you know, he generate, he, so these uh, trees manifest, vegetations manifest, all of them manifest in God's way, how he decides to um, allow them to ultimately form right and, and so we do know the word of god says that um th the seed um is within the kind of the uh, plant and so god creates this way of replication of reproduction within the uh, species within the um uh, different plants and animals that he creates so day three we see the, the, the manifestation of the trees, the, the coverage, you know, of all of these trees all over the earth. And so as I continue on this journey, uh, we uh, I also uh, meditate on uh, a truth, uh, a revelation that the Lord allowed me to understand uh uh, probably maybe uh, a while ago, a while ago, maybe a year ago. I'm not sure. Um, and the reality was how the days of creation um, support each other in the sense that if you put them, uh, put the, uh, day 
one, three, and six on one side of a column, and day two, four, and six on one on the other on the other side of the column, how day one is a setup or a, a foundation for day four, how day two is a setup and foundation for uh, day. Five and how day three is a foundation or set up according to God's wisdom and plan for day six, and so so day one, um, the foundation of light is created. The particles of, of light is created in day one, and we see the bodies of light are made in the heavenlies in uh, outer space. On day four, the sun is created, the moon is created, and the stars are created. So these are bodies of light, but we know the foundation in reference to the particles, the very photons of light, are created on day one. And then day two, we see that that's a foundation for day five. And so day two, the we see the firmament... Um, uh, is created the sky where, uh, and this of course happens after the separation of the waters above and the waters beneath, right? The clouds above and the seas and the oceans beneath. And so on day five, he fills them. Uh, on day five, he fills the skies, right? And he fills the waters. And, and so day two is a platform, for day five. And so, and, and day three, where he creates the trees and, and uh, all of vegetations and, and et cetera, we, we see that that's a foundation, that the, the land there is a foundation for the land animals in, uh, on day six, in, in which he creates, um, you know, the land animals of the earth, as well as humans. Uh, who are the governors of the earth, the, the people who have uh, been commissioned to run the planet, uh, to have the, the very dominion to um, uh, not just be fruitful and to multiply, but to have possession of the planet. Uh, the, the creature that has been given the, the most intelligence, uh, that has been given the desire and care to um, to to steward uh, the planet, to uh, to have the right and the power uh, to ensure that things are running according to the pattern pattern in which God set in them, and what God is ultimately communicating to them spiritually and telling them, and, and so uh, so we are mankind is the individuals who have to ensure that the planet is um, operating um, according to uh, the plan of God as far as managing it. And so God ultimately, by him all things consist, he is ultimately in control and created the very laws by which the earth functions, but he also wants man to manage uh, things um, directly where he may manage things from an indirect state, uh, even though it is in a sense direct, but there is a, uh, a unseen um, uh, stewardship that God ultimately does. Um, and and so, so in that example, we see that there is day three where the trees, right? The trees, the story of the trees, right? So the trees are connected to man. Day three connected to day six. And so God allows my mind to think about what the teachers of old back in school long ago taught me it, it was as if he was saying yeah what did they teach you back in school what, what did they teach you about that back in school you know and and i remembered that yeah the trees 
don't they create oxygen? And and so I remembered, yeah, that's right. So uh, in reference to scientific, um, um, you know, processes and all science, science is, is knowledge in which mankind discovers that ultimately gives God credit for what God did uh, in the origins of all creation. What God did was so complex. And so mankind is given the intelligence to actually understand uh, certain uh, basic levels of what God did uh, in reference to uh, the supernatural work that God ultimately does to allow man to uh, be active and to uh, allow man to also um, be a part of the sustaining of the earth. And so, so with what we were taught back in school <laughs> um, concerning trees, we know that trees uh, are like a natural uh, purifier, an air purifier. So we know that uh, mankind and animals uh, release um, carbon dioxide. You know, we there's many th other things that release carbon dioxide, but specifically we're talking about animals and, of course, mankind, the governor of the earth, uh, releases carbon dioxide. And, of course, the trees, they take that carbon dioxide. They take that carbon dioxide. Of course, uh, there's uh, the... Uh, absorbing of the water from the ground and the very sunlight from the sun. Uh, and this process, through this process, they're able to create oxygen. So there's this revolving cycle of mankind and animals creating the carbon dioxide. And then the, the very uh, trees and plants uh, being able to have the science in them to take that carbon dioxide, um, uh, and, and of course it um, uh, intertwines with the sunlight and the, the 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 resource from the earth, the water, and then you have uh, the the a creating of the very oxygen that mankind needs to breathe. That animals need to breathe. And so there's this connection. There's this revolving. There is this connection that is important that God foreknew. He already knew that this is how he was going to do what he desires to do with Mankind, and so it it reminded me. So, the, the one of the reasons why I believe God was uh, bringing that to memory was the reality of not just how we are connected, but the purpose for the connection. And I am reminded. Um, uh, this is another um, uh, stop along the journey in a sense <laughs> where I'm reminded of a video that I did just maybe um, a few months ago I'm not sure where it, it was called um, married to the mission married to the ground married to the earth and in that video I was talking about being tied to the earth and how Adam being created um, was created ultimately from the very dust of the earth, created from the ground. So he's tied to the earth. And how also um, uh, man um, has to return to the earth when man dies because of sin, because of what sin did in causing the, the expiration date um, to man's life. Uh, be, uh, because uh, God uh, chose that to be the consequence for the transgression um, 
of, of disobeying that commandment, um, eating of the knowledge of eating of the, eating the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, and and so both of them received that death, um, but it was not a physical death, but it was a spiritual death and disconnection from God. Uh, but God knew that he, because he loved them, he wanted to create a solution, a reconciliation solution for them in order to steer them back to the direction of being forever connected to him. Because the environments in which God creates, if you take the environment away from the subject, then the subject can't live. So the environment, so day one, the platform for day four, um, day two, the platform for day five, day three, the platform for uh, day six. And so there's a need for there to be an existing within the platform, within um, the space in which God has created for the entity uh, that God uh, creates. And so this is why it's so important for mankind to be connected to God. Man, God knows that mankind, Adam and Eve, will die without him. So he creates a plan to reconcile man, to make sure that though man has sinned and done wrong, that mankind can be reconciled and be given life again. There's a reviving that God does to mankind because of his love, because of his prerogative, because of his desire, because ultimately his glory will be proclaimed. His glory will be ultimately given. So in that, um, in that revelation, in that video that I did a while ago, the reality of it is that man is tied to the ground. You know, we, we, we talked about in that video how even the, um, the temporary uh, place, the Abraham's bosom, was a place where it was in the center of the earth next to um, hell. And there was a chasm that, that separated the two. And all those who died before Jesus, um, before Jesus came to the earth um, in physical form for the ultimate um, sacrifice that he was for mankind's sin, before that, those who died in righteousness would go to the side of paradise uh, in the earth. And uh, those who died in unrighteousness before Jesus would go to the hell side. Uh, but ever since God, Jesus Christ, led captivity captive, led those who were in paradise from the center of the earth into transitioning into another uh, dimension, a realm into the heavenly realms, uh, the third heaven with the, with the Father in heaven, now all of the center of the earth, this dimension, um, is all fire now. Now it's all hell. It's all the, uh, um, um, you know, uh, it's all the, the, the pit, the, the corruption, the um, uh, hellfire. <laughs> and so the reality is that with, what God is doing in the transitioning, he is still affirming that man is tied to his foundation, still tied to the earth. And man also will rule and reign on the earth. So 
man's beginning and man's end and man's glory is attached to the earth. And so, so many trees are important in a natural sense, but there is also a spiritual decoration. And, and, and so God wants, uh, earth is like man's kingdom. Earth is like man's kingdom. Uh, like God has a kingdom in heaven. And so God will ultimately return to his kingdom, the earth, in a sense, because the earth is an extension of his kingdom. The earth is his works. And so man is, is a lower king who is appointed to govern under the king, under the ultimate king. And so there is a reality that God is showing us as he is demonstrating the, the growth in the direction of kingship through being led by his spirit, through being shaped and prompted by his uh, instructions, of, uh, by his supernatural touch. And so God is ensuring that people are growing in the knowledge and the wisdom of God that he is pouring out in these last days that are separating his people from the people of the world. So the people of the world are growing uh, darker. There's a gross darkness that the people in the world are exhibiting. But the people of God are growing in the knowledge of God, growing in the wisdom of God, growing in the uh, glory of God, the anointing of God, the, the righteousness of God. So there is not just the power that's being administrated or exemplified, but also the character, the inner righteousness, the refraining from sin, the, the a intense, a desire to refrain from sin uh, and to become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's, it, it's important because we know that God desires to shape people in and after the identity of what he knows will actually be able to stand in the end. The, the, because righteousness is what um, is uh, what is stable. Um, truth is what's stable. And these characteristics are what strengthens um, uh, uh, obedience and, and love and, and it, what strengthens um, the heart, what, what strengthens faith. So all of these qualities and characteristics, God uh, enables man to grow after. And, and as we begin to understand them, we develop a passion and a desire to exemplify them because there is strength that comes from the characteristics to be more uh, made in the image and after the design uh, that God has uh, appointed each and every uh, man and woman of God. And so wisdom is growing despite the lack of wisdom that's ex exemplified by the people that are under the power of sin in the world. And so God is enabling the sons and daughters of God to walk after righteousness, to live um, after righteousness. And so the, the, the question that I asked... God was answered. Uh, there, there was answered, and we see that just the simplest things 
God can take you on a journey to understand his handiwork, to understand his will, to understand, uh, to, to connect truths. And that's what he was explaining to me, to connect. It's, it's like, that's one thing about the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will connect to other wisdoms of God. Truth will connect to other truth. There will be a, 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 a whole perspective that comes about when revelation is uncovered. And so God wants that for his people. He wants that uh, because that, uh, that, that it's a part of the relationship. It's a part of the relationship. It's a part of being led. It's a part of taking a walk with Jesus. It's a part of it. It's a part of it. It's a part of being instructed, being, uh, being a person who's being uh, taught, instructed. And, and, and when God teaches you things, it's different from when man teaches you things. It, it's different from the, the teachings back in grade school, back in the world. It's different from that. There's a, 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 a higher depth of his truth that saturates and recreates the inward parts of the soul. The soul begins to be reshaped after the, after the design of God, the emotions, the, 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 the characteristics uh, within us, the, our, our thinking patterns, uh, different aspects of our being begin to be reshaped so there is a a a supernatural a a a divine a prophetic transformation of what's happening on the inside of man so that the born again man can become individuals that are reshaped redeveloped um Re motivated differently than the world. And so there's this divine transformation that is happening. And so in that process, God rewards. In that process, God supports. In that process, God provides. In that process, God uh, emotionally strengthens. He uh, strengthens your mind. He he knows what ingredients you need. He knows what he wants to tell you, and what he and he knows how what he tells you is going to lead you to an understanding that ultimately benefits you to be shaped after his likeness even more spiritually. And so wisdom is a very important thing. And so God is, is maturing the sons of God in that reality, in that understanding. And so uh, let's look at chapter um, 13 in Proverbs 13. Let's go through. I want to kind of run through some chapters and to uh, possibly pull out some specific things uh, as to describe what the contrast is communicating in the word of God, in the book of Proverbs here, the, uh, another book of wisdom. So let's, um, I'm just going to try to run through this. I'm just going to pick a few. Um, let's look at um, verse 7. There is, um, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Uh, there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. And so that is important to know uh, because... 
that's a reality that the man of God, as he's on earth, he knows the value of not expressing his glory or I'm not going to say glory, um, not expressing uh, certain levels of his riches um, uh, outwardly because that can um, resemble or look like boasting. He understands that he doesn't have to dress like a millionaire. He doesn't have to dress like somebody per se. Dressing nice can be good, but there can sometimes be an overexpression. You know, Jesus talked about that with the Pharisees, how they dressed very nice and they had all of the phylacteries and they, they had, you know, um, the, these expensive garments and, and you know, they, they did a lot of things externally um, to demonstrate their worth. Uh, there was a, a part of it that was not wise. They, they, you know, they, there's a part of it that is okay, but the tradition of it, the, uh, the focus of it, uh, you know, in this modern day, many people you know, uh, express their uh, worth. Um, they intentionally e express their worth through what they have, um, you know, with their clothes or with their, uh, um, you know, big houses, big cars. Um, you know, th there's a superficial uh perspective and and so there's a uh there's a uh, um, a hypocrisy of that or a deception in that because if you don't really have it but yet you're portraying um a posture as if you do then it's it's um not built on solid ground. Your, your, the portraying of it is not built on solid ground. Now, if you have, you know, Roy, Rolls Royce money um, and you drive a Rolls Royce, that's different from trying to drive a Rolls Royce but not have um, much money in the bank, not actually sitting on the foundation that... Uh, that that grants you the ability to um, uh, do that. So there's a wisdom that's spoken here in reference to there's a type of person who who dresses regular but has much things, and there's the other person who boasts as if or dresses as if they have much. But in all reality, they don't. And so there's a wisdom in being able to um, protect what you have through dressing normal and understand that you don't have to uh, live in a way or uh, uh, operate in a way as if your identity is in what you have. What you have should have righteous purpose behind it and not necessarily vanity purpose behind it. And so that that word that it's 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 only a, a, a two sentences, but yet there's so much in it. There's so much. There's, there's such. And so this, this this is one of the realities of what the proverbs talk about. The reality of how it's such a short um, statement, but yet it's 
there's a world or a lifetime of wisdom, a lifetime of understanding that's in that specific proverb, that's in that uh, that specific statement. And so, you know, many in the world, you know, I, I've seen that before. I, I've seen that before. Many of us suffer from um, this identity crisis. You know, I've seen it before to where people have, you know, this big um, armored, uh, you know, Hummer truck in their front yard, but yet they live in what the world calls the ghetto. You know, you have a hundred thousand dollar car in front of your house, but yet your house is not worth a hundred thousand. Um, you know, your house is, you know, you you have more money invested in something that depreciates over time than a house that actually can, uh, that, that has equity, that has value within it, you know, that can increase. And, and so the, there is a, a backwardsness. There's a vanity. There's a, uh, there's a way that people express themselves that uh, become a manifestation of the sickness. There's a manifestation of the sickness because of the decisions that they make that are not in right standing with wisdom, with wisdom. So, one of the things that I could say about that is Jesus. Jesus, you know, said that um, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, right? So Jesus, he's articulating the fact that um, foxes have holes that are their homes. That's where they sleep. Um, birds have nests that are are a, you know, that, that's a house. It's a place um, of habitation in which they rest, in which they are able to lodge, and, and it's permanent, uh, or in some way, shape, or form, it's um, supposed to be permanent. It's supposed to be uh, um, a, a place um, of habitation for the fox or for the, the bird. Um, but he says himself that he has no... Um, place to lay his head in certainty. He knows that by faith, he knows that he does have a place in reference to where he is um, going to go uh, as he fulfills the journey, as he fulfills the mission on his life, as he you know goes about from place to place, as he, as he sojourns, he knows that he's not going to lack a bed. He's going to have a bed as he continues to do the very work that he is ordained to do in reference to the salvation work that God uh, came to this earth to do, that Jesus came to the earth to do, the, the starting of the church age that he did. And so he's not worried about the holes. He's not worried about the nests. He's not worried about the houses. He's not worried about certain luxuries of life, certain uh, certain permanent um, things um, in life. You know, he's not worried about that. He understands that uh, because he is of the Father, that he's going to have everything that he needs to fulfill the very mission that is on his life. And so he doesn't need the vanity of, of certain things. Um, he doesn't need that. He's on a journey. He's on a mission. And so uh, he knows he's going to have what he needs when he needs it. And so this reality in verse 7 um yeah, there's, and, and so Jesus is rich. 
uh, there uh, there is that maketh himself rich but hath nothing. There is uh, there is that maketh himself poor, Jesus, yet hath great riches, Jesus. He doesn't have to dress or even look. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 um, that he was not, he was not, just to paraphrase it, he was not comely. He, he, there was nothing in him to show that he was of great um, physical desire to the eyes. Um, he was not the most attractive man in Israel. You know, there were probably many men, many men that were more physically attractive than he was. Um, he that was by design, that was on purpose, and he he did that to show that that was not uh, his focus. His focus was not the uh, the 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 way that he looked, but the mission that he was on, and. Regardless of how he looked, regardless of uh, what he had, regardless of how he portrayed himself, he was the richest person on the planet. He was the richest person on the planet, though he did not look like it. And so there's a wisdom in that. There's a wisdom in you not needing to look like you have. I'm, I'm not saying that you should just wear anything and just don't even consider the idea of matching. <laughs> don't even consider, you know, um, wearing protective shoes, wear sandals everywhere, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, only um, buy things that are on discount, you know, <laughs> or sale or bargain prices, you know. I mean, hey, there's a wisdom in that, but then there's a wisdom in buying things that are, um, you know, name brand or whatnot, you know. But th the reality is there is a higher focus that Jesus is on, that he's uh, implementing, and so Jesus is the richest one. He's the richest because he has access. He's the creator and he has access to all of the wealth of the world if he needed it, if that was a part of what he needed to fulfill the very mission he was on. And so the 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 so the um the focus was the mission. The focus was the development. The focus was the identity of what he came to the earth for. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to uh, be the Lamb of God uh, who, um, uh, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. You know, he, he was the propitiation. You know, he, uh, the, propi the propitiation for our sins, but not for our sins only, but for the sins of the entire world. Um, and, and so there's a wisdom in that. There's much that we can say about that reality, um, about the perverse aspect of it, the lack of wisdom aspect of it, the immature aspect of it. But we can also uh, speak on the righteousness, the full of understanding, the prudent, the um, the secure aspect of it. Secure. Oh, I don't need to dress like that. I don't need to have um, you know that much money in the bank. I, I don't need to have or drive that car. I, I don't need to. Um, have this or this or that but or or I don't need to spend my money on this or this or that but I have great riches I have great riches and and so because of that the rich man can have more in the bank because he doesn't foolishly spend or you can have the person who understands that, hey, my riches are in heaven. You know, my riches, I am storing up my treasure in heaven. You know, where moth and, 
and rust and and thieves can't break in and steal. You know, uh, there and so there's a a reality of what God is teaching uh, His sons and daughters um, to uh, invest in, um, to understand as to ensure that the mission on their lives are fulfilled. So um, let's look at, let's, let's go to, um, so that's chapter 13. Let's go to chapter uh, 14. Um, let's look at, let's pick one. Mm, let's see here. Verse, let's get one that's not, um, many of these are self-explanatory in a sense. And so one of the, one of the, um, one of the reasons why I want to look at these is in, I believe I'm gonna go back really quick to Proverbs chapter one. It has something that I love to read, um, uh, Let's see the the uh, the few verses in Proverbs chapter one, um, uh, where it says in verse five, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Uh, verse six, here it is, uh, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And so where it says um, dark sayings there, that's a reality of the mysterious sayings, the, the mysterious um, um, understanding, the, the mysterious uh, communication that is being said because at times proverbs cannot be obvious they, they, they may not be obvious and so there's a at times you know i've um you know read the proverbs for years and you know i will uh, read a proverb and then all of a sudden you know after like maybe three four years of reading it i'm like oh that's what that means you know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, I, that I, I, I didn't grasp that at first. Thank you, Jesus. And so God does that. It's a journey as we learn and grasp his truth, truths, and it helps to add to our faith. And in adding to our faith, we are able to add to what we do. Um, and in adding to what we do, we are adding to the level of righteousness that we're capable of uh, capable of exercising, and God loves that and desires that we be excellent of an excellent spirit, as Daniel was. Uh, be of um, just uh, behavior, like Joseph and Mary. Uh, be like. Um, um, Joseph in Egypt, you know, and in reference to his good stewardship, uh, stewardship is a, a, a very good, uh, quality, uh, a quality that ultimately positions one to be promoted, to be, uh, given impartation and, str uh, and strength to be, um, invested in more by God. Uh, as you do well with the grace and the glory that you have, God will add more. He will impart more. He will open your understanding more. He will give more of his insight and glory as to lead you um, and uh, enable you to understand the dark sayings, to understand the mysterious sayings for your benefit, especially when it comes to um, the calling of God, the, the direction in which he's desiring that you go, uh, you know, um, and so that's a, a blessing. So um, going back to uh, chapter 14, uh, let's pick one here. 
uh, to kind of go through. Um, let's see here. Okay, the ver first 15 is simple. Yeah, um, verse 15. Yeah, the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. You know, um, and so th th that verse 15, I, th I think that's a very powerful one. That's a very, very powerful one. Uh there's probably more that we can look at. Um, we might look at another one. But verse 15, I, I love that one because it, it it's the it's the crux of one of the different things that the whole book of Proverbs is talking about. The the um, book of Proverbs is innate it is helping so through the fear of the Lord, through this uh the reverence for God, this internal understanding that God is in control and God does what he wants to do and God wants you to walk in a way that resembles him um, is as the simple believeth every word, meaning the simple have no discretion. They have no gauge to discern, to diagnose, to um understand uh, uh, the plot of the enemy um, against him uh, or he doesn't can't uh, can't distinguish um, right from wrong can't um, basically just believe everything the word of God says in the New Testament believe not every spirit but try the spirits to see if they come from God, right? Um, the simple believe it every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So the prudent man, his um, desire is to be led of God, to use the very tools that God has given him as a uh, means of continuing along the path in which God says is important for him to stay on track. And so um, the word of God in uh, Proverbs 3, 5, um, um, therefore submit yourselves to God, lean um, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge the Lord, acknowledge God in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. So there is a guiding of the man of God, the woman of God, a steering, a leading of them by God's spirit. God um, is desiring to implant the thoughts, implant the understanding, imp implant the revelation implant the ultimate glory that's going to help in the process of uh, leading you in the direction that God is desiring. And so uh, the, 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 so the prudent man, the, the man who uh, has built up, there is a building up of understanding. There's a building up of the knowledge of God. There's a building up of righteousness and truth. Um, and there shouldn't be a, you know, the simple is like, um, there's a gullible aspect. There is a, uh, a lack of the formation of the uh, proper uh, reasoning that God wants to impart. He strengthens. He 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 gives dreams and visions. He he does things. He instructs through other people. He he does all sorts of things to enable the prudent man to understand what to do in what situations how to gauge, how to judge, how to measure, how to do things as to ensure that the prudent man 
to, to ensure that the wise man, ensure that the man of understanding uh, reaps the very results that God says is possible in his word. And so that's a, 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 a blessing. And so God leads, he, he, he moves people of God uh, through different scenarios as to ensure that they will reap the very reward that was promised to them. And so that's a blessing. So in, um, let's move to chapter 15. Um, oh, right there at the beginning, we, we can uh, look at that uh, verse 1. Uh, it says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Um, verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of the fools poureth out foolishness. Um, so there's there's more that I can read um, in this. But looking at verse one, that's always been a verse that have I've kept in memory, kept in my mind. Uh, a it's it's a principle. It's a, a a pillar that we can build off of, and. That's a truth that has reigned true so through through so many di different situations, and I'm pretty sure you've had examples yourself of the reality of how that manifests, and it ultimately gives God's it give God's glory. Um, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous word stirs up strife. So the, the soft answer, the so you may be being uh, um, spoken harsh, uh, 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 you know, so, uh, maybe sp spoken harsh against. And God wants to implant the, the actual stability in your emotions, the stable uh, condition of your mind and thoughts. He wants for your characteristic and your behaviors to be uh, to honor him in the sense that you are giving God the situation. You don't need to respond to the situation as if the situation is your responsibility to resolve. One of the things that's important about that for the man and woman of God is the fact that you put the situation on God's tab. You put it on God's tab. And you simply walk in the righteousness and the wisdom of that soft answer. And you watch the result be that a soft answer returns to you. Because you are not attempting by the flesh to fuel any fires. You and your actions are attempting to be governed and led by the love, by the sobriety, by the passion to advance God's will, that you know how to control your body. Uh, uh, the body, is, uh, uh, the word of God talks about, Paul talks about possessing one's soul. And in the possession of one's soul, there is the learning of how to respond in a very mild and gentle and soft way as to receive the blessing of the changing of the scenario into 
a scenario that will demonstrate the peace of God. So there's a peacemaker spirit. There's a peacemaker uh, character. There is a way of communicating that brings about or stimulates peace in others. If the peace of God is in you and it is fervent, then you can speak in a way that brings about, the, that pulls the peace out of others. Even though the situation is uh, inflamed or whatever it may be, God is giving you the power to not necessarily control the situation because it's not about control. It's about understanding that you can reflect and invite, more so invite the person into a world in which God is making. So God is making you in this world. He's making you. And in the making you, there are fragrances that come from your actions that will speak to the inner part of the opposition of another woman or man that will enable them to realize that there is a peace, there is a poise, that there is a power that's within what you are communicating that will ultimately not only benefit you in the end, but it will benefit them. There is an attraction of the transformation. There's an attraction. And so God wants people to understand that it doesn't matter what people say, whatever they say, you Give it to God. There is a putting it on God's tab. Doesn't matter if they curse you. Doesn't matter if they say evil things about you. Doesn't matter if they, you know, gossip about you or say wicked things or whatever it is. It, 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 it doesn't matter if, you know, uh, uh, you know, someone in another city or nation or whatever, you know, uh, catches wind of it. It's all about understanding that as you transform, you release a fragrance. And that fragrance is supposed to help people to reflect the nature and the mind of God the nature in the heart of God. These people might not even be saved, but yet the fragrance of what you are doing and how you are exemplifying yourself ultimately entices them to come into the knowledge in which you are walking in, even though they don't know the basis of the knowledge. And so God is trying to help the people of God be examples of transformation through the through the allowing God to lead you, lead you by his spirit. So that's what we're talking about, the leading, the causing God to be available in your life to lead you, available to lead you so that you can understand these wisdoms and allow them to be the shaping tools that enable your heart and mind, your soul, to reflect the knowledge and the ways of God so that God can be glorified in the end and so that you can ultimately spend eternity with God as God has ordained from the foundations of the world. And so... It's a blessing. And so God is doing this great work in the world. And you ought to uh, come into the house congregation of God as he does more by his spirit. So God bless you. Uh, we're going to, of course, continue with Proverbs, Proverbs series uh, soon. Uh, as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Love you.